Hello and welcome to another episode of Coding Secrets. Today I'm going to explain all the tricks I use to create the 3D depth effect for Toy Story's side-scrolling levels. While developing the game, I played Clockwork Knight on the then new Sega Saturn. It was a cool 3D twist to traditional 2D platforming that was heralding in the new age of 32-bit consoles, but I thought we might be able to pull off a similar effect just using the aging 16-bit Genesis. So here's how it was achieved. First, the floor. It looks like a nicely textured perspective correct polygon. But if we turn off all the tricks, we can see that it's a single image on the background layer, slightly wider than the visible screen. If we load the screen into Photoshop, we can see how the effect was achieved. If we use the skew tool, we can skew the image left and right, and you start to see how the effect was created. All we're really doing here is shifting the horizontal lines back and forth by differing amounts, something 16-bit consoles can do with horizontal interrupts quite easily. I'll use the skew tool to do one fairly smooth right to left sweep. Now if we scroll the screen at the same time, we're getting close. I'll repeat that movement and mask off some of the screen to isolate one part of the floor. The floor texture we use has a repeating pattern that exactly matches the maximum skew effect. So at that point we can swap back to the start and the floor patterns match, allowing us infinite scrolling. And so that's how the floor effect was done. But what about all the sides of all the different objects in the level? Well, I'll turn off the effect and highlight all of the areas that the effect is used. All these different areas use different colours to represent graphics memory that is reserved for the effect to use. It looks very complicated, so let's break down what's going on using a simple case, the cardboard bank. You can see that there are two areas reserved, one on each side of the box. So to produce depth, we need a graphic to represent the side of the box. Now this image is 22 pixels wide, so we can store 22 frames of animation to represent every possible angle. This may seem like it uses a lot of memory, but most of the graphic is a repeating 8 pixel high chunk, so the graphic is actually only 24 by 24 pixels per frame, and so the whole animation takes just 6K. Now we can copy any frame into the memory reserved for the left hand side of the bank. Again this is actually just a 24 by 24 pixel chunk of memory, so it takes just 288 bytes of video RAM. And we can flip it and use it for the other side of the bank using another 288 bytes chunk of video RAM. Removing the memory illustrations shows how the 3D effect looks. And then selecting which frames to use and when, based on the screen's scroll position, completes the effect. Now you might be thinking that even 288 bytes is a lot per side of each object, and you'd be right, it would quickly add up. But if you look at the different colours used, they represent the unique video RAM memory banks. So there are four banks for this shelf, blue and the three shades of brown, and four different ones for this table, as it uses a different set of animations to do the legs, although it's exactly the same technique, just slightly more memory. But when we get to the next table, it uses the same four banks as the shelves. Once an area goes off screen, it can be reused for the next object. And as the sides repeat vertically, the object can be just as tall as it needs to be for no extra memory. So we just had to be really careful how close certain shelves and tables were to each other to make sure that one side was off the screen before the next object used the same memory. But it meant that we only used a total of less than 3K of video memory and around 14K of animated graphics, which compressed down to virtually nothing. The side of Andy's bed was a special case, where the back of the bed was a graphic on the parallax layer and the side was a 24 pixel wide animated sprite. And all the other effects used sprites that moved at slightly different speeds to the background. So this lamp is just a sprite that scrolls slightly slower than the level. And the same with the back legs of this chair. So hopefully that sheds some light into how the 3D depth was added to the levels in Toy Story. Be sure to check out my other Toy Story videos where I talk about how the fully 3D sections were achieved and how the multi-channel sampled music was created. As always, please like, subscribe, click the bell or leave a comment if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.